back the headless YouTuber doing headless planty things with her trusty pug pudge. <laughs> Back with another week of plant to do's, which is my favorite series to do on this channel. Just want to catch you up a little bit. I actually started filming this week of plant to do's last week, but it was a crazy week. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't keep doing it every day. So I literally recorded for one day and then I just went rogue for another seven days. So what I'm gonna do is just backtrack to the first day that I started recording, which was the day that Alice and I did our collab video together, which I will throw the thumbnail up here. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, please watch it. It's a fun video. We talk about things that grind our gears in the plant community and it's not meant to be like a hateful video. It's just kind of a get it off our chest. Um, I feel like a lot of people can probably relate to what we uh, talked about. And then once you're done watching that, go on Alice's channel and watch this video. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna take you back to our collab day and then we will jump back into real time and I will tell you what is going on today. Or maybe I'll end with that one so it's like more of a lighthearted light hearted, yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. So then we'll start with... Wanna start with this one? Yeah. Okay. I feel like there's a lot of empty space to the right of me. Does that look more even? A little bit more? A little. Why does it feel like we're like balls? <laughs> And we're both in white shirts. <laughs> yeah. I think that's good. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm back, the headless YouTuber, doing headless planty things with my headless planty <laughs> friend, Alice, who is also a headless planty YouTuber. I need to get some allocations repotted. So this is my allocation silver dragon that is wrapping around the bottom of this pot so i need to just repot it into something bigger and kids ruin everything <laughs> my ovaries are shriveling are you sure <laughs> don't ask me that oh look i can see a little corn oh it's going the wrong way no <laughs> yeah look at how cute these are Oh my oh, god. It's just I feel like hot mustard is the sauce that dads get. Yeah, but we're such dads though. Yeah. I feel. But I like mixing mine. Yeah. <gasps> did I open this already? Probably did. What? Oh. Hopefully I don't get poisoned. Like McDonald's mustard just It tastes different. It's very different. Mm -hmm. It's like Less salty. Mm -hmm. And like. Not as acidic either. I haven't found another mustard that's comparable. Mm -hmm. Like at any right. restaurant, bottled. It's just like mayonnaise. Why is Kewpie mayonnaise much better than regular mayonnaise? Mm -hmm. But McWise like, chicken sauce. So tasty. Like, you can't just use mayonnaise, yeah. right? Blows my mind that you can just like turn on a camera and just start filming. <laughs> Oh, poor Alice. <laughs> I know. I lost count of how many I ate. Don't count. Don't count. <sighs> I'm taking a day off tomorrow. Well, day off. I think I'll work at night, like edit at night, but. What are you gonna do? We have to go grocery shopping. Oh yeah, this is off too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we're watching Yellow Jackets. Are you watching that? We're always watching something new. It's like all I live for now. <laughs> it fuels my it? soul. It's about this group, like this group of high school girls, like in the 90s. They go on this like soccer, they go to the soccer competition and then their plane crashes in the middle of the woods and then they have to survive. It's good. The heck? It's good. I don't really have that much time to be watching so much TV anyway. But you need to make time. <laughs> I feel like it's the only thing that's like keeping me like level. It's like I have something to look forward to that's not work. Yeah. I think you get more out of watching movies and stuff than I do. Like mm. if you, I could probably count on two hands how many movies I've seen. Like that's an exaggeration, but like I haven't seen like, any wow. movies. 
So then what do you do that's like not plants that like just calms you down and like relaxes you? Well, like the things that I can spend hours doing and like not even realize the time has passed is just like being on my phone, which is like not really that. But you like your phone games. I do, I play phone games. We're on um, <laughs> a Matchington Mansion, Matchington Mansion. Merge Mansion. No. What? Oh, I'm playing Merge Mansion. What? Trade me. It's Matchington Mansion. It's Merge Mansion. It's the one that they got me because they put Kathy Bates in the ad. This one. No, I don't have that. You're just like merging things together and creating items to like fulfill I've never, tasks. I've never seen that. Oh, I bought so many ads for this. Well, Wait, what's Matchington Matt? The one we're on a team together. Homescapes? Homescapes! <laughs> What the f is that? Matching to match. I'm not here. I'm not here. I'm not here. No, that's gotta be a thing. Search it. I can't search it. Search it. It's a thing. If nothing comes up, I'm just gonna I'm gonna jump into the room. Oh, there's a thing. See? Same premise, right? Um, yeah. Match match pillows for a house makeover in this fun match three adventure. Sounds so nerdy. And it's always like some woman gets wronged and then they end up in Siberia and yeah. you have help her. Help her. <laughs> help her? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. No. There's like a broken window yeah. and they give you an option yeah. to like a new window or, or duct tape. And or, or, or hammer. Oh and yeah, hammer. Like, oh, hammer. <laughs> It's so frustrating that they never make it work. It's oh, they always pick the wrong one. But also, that's not how the game is either. Yeah. So like you get there and it's like you're playing it's totally like different. match three games, and then it's nothing to do with the story. They put the add on. They should. They know that that's what people want to play. So why, why not make nobody it? actually makes a game like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like. I feel like you should get in trouble for that. Like your ads mm -hmm. are not accurate mm -hmm. to what you're downloading. Not on YouTube, it's like any of that time is just like borrowing from time that I mm -hmm. need to be. Like that's why I keep getting more and more behind every week. I think that if you can get even one week ahead, yeah, it'll like change your life. Like why don't you do like a your video and then every few weeks just do a repot with me. You're already sitting there, just film it. Mm -hmm. And then that way you'll have like something for the following week. Just change your outfit. I've done that before. Mm. I just changed my shirt. I'm already sitting there. All my stuff is out. My camera's out. And then I film a repot with me. And then that way I've literally done two weeks of videos. That's your month sitting. Because if you can get one week ahead, they like can easily repot with me 30 minutes. Yeah. You'll be a week ahead and you won't be so like scrambling for time now. Yeah. Just. A suggestion. <laughs> Not that I know it. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> Today is just, it's a lot. Um, I don't know if you can see behind me and next to me. The plant room is a freaking mess. I have been, <laughs> hey, <laughs> okay, he's done. I've been filming like crazy, uh, just trying to get ahead of the game so it's just been one video after another and the plant room has turned into a disaster so i do need to get cleaned up but ugh, my adhd wants to veer away from what i had planned today on my to-do list i actually wanted to just clean up the plant room and <laughs> i just wanted to clean up the plant room and just fly through editing today to finish one more video but I just, I have this itch and I want to redo my Mars Hydro tent. Mostly because some of my philodendrons are just getting way too big for my exo back here. My anthuriums are super squished in the exo. So this week I'm prioritizing getting everything reshifted, even though I just did it again. And I feel like I need to utilize my Mars Hydro tent a little bit better for my larger plants. So I'm going to do that today. Who knows if the plant room is gonna get cleaned up because uh, I just, you know, we don't know how much energy will be left after this adventure. So I'm gonna do that. I think maybe I'll just 
plop down here and kind of show you what's growing in the Mars Hydro tent. I'm not quite sure I want to show the actual rejigging of it because uh, I look crazy. My hair is like at this length now where it's kind of getting to the awkward stage. It's hitting my shoulders so it either flares this way or flares that way and the top is just, I just don't, we just, I don't need that energy on this channel. So um, I will show you what's growing and then I'll rejig it and then I will show you what it looks like after. But yeah, let's just get started. I'm going to move over this way. Oh my gosh, I have I have so many sad plants in here. I like this is kind of where I put all of my rehabs and things I'm supposed to be bringing back to life, but then because it's in the tent, I just neglect it more. So I feel like that's probably not a good plan. I think by the time this video goes up, I would have already posted my video where I show you all the plants that um, I really want to see glow up this year. It's like plants that I've neglected that I just, I want to put some extra attention into. And this is one of them, my super, super sad tenue that is literally on the brink of actual death. Like this looks awful. I just, I'm a bad person. This is another plant on that list. Philodendron Postazanum Silver. It's it's something it's it's something and we're gonna we're, we're gonna try another plant on that list philodendron sodoroy af look at that new leaf it looks like my hair when i wake up in the morning i have a uh, another sad plant in here this is an Anthurium pendens it's just everything is so dry that's, that's the issue. Everything is super dry. The substrate is just way too aerated for this climate. So I just need to handle that. Oh no, I have to do this this week too. I'm gonna need to transplant more of my seedlings. Some of them are not doing well because again, I've neglected them. It's too hot in there. So I'm gonna do that this week as well. Oh man. This is just like disappointment after disappointment. This is my um, Skindapsis silver, or silver something, silver silver cloud, silver cloud, Skindapsis silver silver cloud, <laughs> silver cloud. Here is my Anthurium valenaorum propagation rehab. It's starting to root though, so that's good. But this thing used to be majestic, and then I got my hands on it, and then. Well, it was all downhill from there. This is a Philodendron Campos Partoanum that is doing amazing. Wow. I didn't get this on this uh, lazy pole until recently, and there's like so many roots now. Good for you. Good job, buddy. And then I have the bottom cutting here. Let's see how this guy is doing. Not as many roots. And then I have a Philodendron Ernestii on a lazy pole as well. New leaf coming in. This is a Homolomina tie splash. I find this one very difficult to grow. And in my experience, these kinds of Homolominas are usually quite easy, but it, it refuses to grow anywhere but my Mars Hydro tent. So I have to keep that one in there. This is a rehab philodendron gloriosum that I propagated from a stem cutting. This leaf has been furled up for way too long and I think it's just a lack of humidity in there. My Syningia leucotrica. Oh man, look at these little taquitos. This is a very, very sad, depressing video. I have an elbow cutting here. This is the only elbow cutting that of all of them that I've propped that refuses to push out new growth. Like I cut them all at the same time and so many of them have already pushed out like two to three leaves and that one is just like, nope, I'm not doing anything. This one here was a two node cutting. You can see the bottom and this one have activated. I hope both of them grow. That one's in no drainage too and just perlite. 
All of these elbows are gonna go back to my friend Pearl who actually owns them. She just bought a house, so now we actually have space to put them in there. I'm gonna go in and style her whole plant, her whole plants with house. <laughs> I'm gonna go in and style her whole house with plants, so that's gonna be really fun. Um, and then this is just another Skindapsis Silver Cloud propagation, which I don't know why I propagated it because I don't really want any more. And then this is another philodendron tenue that I got from Alice that has been also severely neglected. And then this poor thing, this is my philodendron something. Gosh, I forgot the name. I got it from the Equigenera show and it was just so rotty and it did not, it did not enjoy coming home. So I don't even know if this one can be saved, which makes me really sad because I was super happy to have it. And it's not like I didn't pay a good amount of money for it either. This is the Equidurance that I repotted in my collab video with Alice. It's getting quite big, which is exciting. This isn't a plant that I'm like super obsessed with that I really, really love, but I feel like I'm learning to love it more and I don't want to give up on it before it really starts to show its size. So we'll see. Whoa, this is... <laughs> And then Therium Oroquianum that I got from my friend Aaron that just, oh my gosh, it hated everything I did to it. But it did push out this new leaf in the tent. So I think I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it in there or if I'm gonna try and put it in my exo with my other Anthuriums, but I don't know. This is just, this is something. Look, that is so bad. I'm exposing myself here feel so vulnerable. This is a philodendron splendid cutting that I propagated. I don't know when I, I did it in a video. Did I? I don't remember anymore. Anyway, philodendron splendid, philodendron Milano Chrysum. This one is for my sister. And I think I'm gonna give this one to my sister too if she hasn't already replaced her splendid. Can't remember. Uh, this one is my no ID. Anthurium. I bought it as a politiflorum, but it's clearly not a politiflorum and it clearly hates me. Me and Alice got our seedlings at the same time and hers looks like an actual pendant leaf Anthurium. Mine looks like grass that grows on the side of the freeway. And then I have a, ew, it's sticky. No, ew, 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 ew. This is a philodendron myoi propagation that has rooted for me in the tent and is also pushing out some new growth. Uh, who else do I have? This is an unknown, unknown Anthurium, I think. I don't, I don't actually know what that is. <laughs> no comment. Please don't fall. Oh my gosh. Ah! Who are you? This is my my once, my used to be alocasia Michaelitziana Mexikowskii that I'm waiting to come back to life this spring, hopefully. What the heck is this? Oh, beautiful. My little Jose that is getting so big. I grew this one from a little stump, so I'm quite pleased with how much it's grown and with the amount of variegation on it because it came from a mother plant that wasn't super, super variegated. I'm finding that these props or this prop is a lot more variegated than the plant it came from. So that's exciting. Again, another no ID stump. I hate myself. This is a reverted Florida beauty and it came from such a beautiful mother plant that I just refused to believe that it wouldn't give me variegation but still, nothing, nothing. I think that I potted this on camera. Did I? Can't remember anymore, but look at this new leaf, it's beautiful. Why won't my camera focus? No? Okay, sure. Whoa, this is a, look at you. This is an Anthurium roquianum with lots of spots going on with you. This is a prop from my mother plant. I took a bunch of stump cuttings and it's just taken so long to wake up, but they all finally woke up. They don't look the best. This one's not as spotty, but look at that guy. There's no spider mites or anything. 
Hmm. I gotta like TLC these. I don't know if I'm gonna keep them or if I'm gonna sell them. They're kind of like worthless at this point locally. Like nobody is paying anything for queens because everyone has one. This one is my reverted heteracium var oxycardium that I got from my friend and it just never pushed out any leaves with like variegation. It gave me, where is it? Where'd that leaf go? There was one leaf where it was just like in the itty bitty corner. Oh, here. <laughs> this is the only leaf that gave me something with variegation and it's just right there. So that was a bust. And then, whoa. And then last but not least, I was gonna propagate this micans to put back in my pot, but now I'm too lazy and it's like pushing out all these super long aerial roots. So I might just give this one away. I don't know. I don't even know if anyone's looking for micans. So anywho, I have a shelf in here and I think I'm gonna take it out. I'm not quite sure what I wanna do with all these little plants, like all my rehabs, but I feel like the tent is maybe not the best place for it because it dries out so fast. So I'm gonna have to strategize here and figure out what my game plan is gonna be because I do wanna get some of my larger plants in here just to see how big I can grow them. Primarily my, um, I wanna get my Glorious in there because it's getting pretty big. My Philodendron SP Columbia and maybe like my crystal black, but I don't really have the lights that I wanna use for my tent right now, I haven't bought it. So, I don't know. I'm gonna have to figure something out. I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I don't know if I'm ready to like do this big, do this big move around, but I know something's gotta happen because my rehabs are not doing great in here. Anyway. I'll check back in with you when I have a plan. <laughs> I'm stressed. I'm stressed. I'm so stressed. I hate my ADHD. Why did we, why? Why did we think this was a good idea? Okay, so, I'm gonna fall. Um, I have dismantled my shelf that was in there and I made it shorter. So, I think I should still be able to keep some of these smaller props in there on the lower shelves and then still fit some taller plants in here, but I just need to get it cleaned up a little bit in here, figure out if I'm still gonna need these grid walls. But yeah, that's where we're at. And now I've got this smaller one that I can use somewhere else in here, somewhere, anywhere, any takers, no? Okay. I'm about to scream. My glorious leaf. Oh, it's putting out its first leaf with a real, with real lobes. Oh my gosh. Okay, so like the previous leaf had these little, you know, little tiny bunny ears. But look at this one. Oh my word. Once this leaf hardens off, I'm actually going to be replacing this pole and getting it on a clear lazy pole because I'm I'm deeply inspired. So I'm putting you in there, buddy. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Hey, get out of here. I don't like that. Why do I have to whine about everything? Stay. Stay. I'm such a freak. Okay. I'm actually loving this. But I don't think you guys understand how long I have been waiting for this moment. Look, nope, 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 I'm unwell. I've just been waiting so long for some real like leaf maturing and we're finally here, we did it. Look at like how badly my lights burned this though. I think that this even might be too strong. I find that the Glorious does a lot better in lower light conditions, so we'll have to see because they burn really easily. Another plant I think I'm gonna get into here is my Milano Chrysum. Where is my Milano? And then I also wanna do my Florida Beauty 
and something else. Oh, I really want to do my SP Silver, but I really like seeing it in my EXO. Okay, I'm going to get stuff in here, and then I'll check back in with you when things are in, because I can't, I can't focus. Look, I have a floor. I don't even know what this is. I think I'm going to just throw it away. Ta-da! So here it is. I actually thought that I was going to lose a lot of space by removing the shelf, but it actually freed up a lot of space, and... Now I can fit some larger plants in here. I've also utilized my grid walls to hang things. I actually just, mount, not mounted, but I hung my Glorious from the grid wall using the S-Hooks too. And it's gonna work out great, I think. Down here is Sadland, USA. Well, Canada. I keep forgetting I'm in Canada. As sad as this looks, I'm actually glad that I have kind of a lot of projects to work on over the next few months and hopefully can take you along with me to see how I rehab these and bring them back to life. Down here, I just have some stumps and just some random props. Here are more rehab plants and some of the smaller plants that I have growing. And then up here, um, plants with variegation so my mandula my florida beauty i have my sp silver back there and i'm hoping that it's far enough away from this light i tried to move it as close to the door as possible so that it's not like shining directly on top of it but i'm going to have to monitor the plants in here for the next few days very closely just to see if any burn is happening or um if any of them start declining which I don't think is gonna happen. Hopefully I can maintain at least 70% humidity in here. It gets kind of dry to be honest, but now that um, I'm able to fit more plants, I think that the humidity issue should be a little bit better. <sighs> and now the rest of this plant room. I'm not even sure what I'm gonna do, but I do know that I'm going to convert this bottom one to fit all of my Soderoys and like my, my Majestic. So I'm gonna get all of those down there and then I'm gonna squeeze anthuriums into here. And yeah, hopefully I can free up some of the space in there because they are just way too cramped. I need to try and find a place for this tordum and the hetero. I think I'm gonna move them into the tent as well. Um, and I do plan on getting some new lights in there because I don't like how warm it is. I'd like it to be a little bit of a cooler light. And then I just have all these to do. So I'm not quite sure how much I'm going to record. I'm gonna try. I'm just feeling a little bit overwhelmed at the moment, to be honest. So we are in my 362418XO. Uh, please bear with me, it is not the best angle, but I'm go just gonna get the walls cleaned up a little bit and then I'm gonna get some Ethereums into here. The first one I'm gonna be putting in my XO is this super sad looking Hoff X. It's actually like growing. There's a new leaf on it and it's so dark. You can barely even see it, but you can see it's being squished up against the wall. There's just not enough space in there. So I think I'll put this one in here just to alleviate some space since this is one of my larger anthuriums. I think I wanna get a strap leaf anthurium in here. And I'm thinking my, hmm, I think I'll do my politiflorum in here. Uh, maybe, what do I want to do here? Here? Oh my word. Come on. What a cake. Please don't fall. Don't do it. Don't do it. Why is this leaf 
Turn that way. No, that way. It's still kind of squished. Maybe I put it here, 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 like that. Okay. Whoa, this is chaos. This is absolute chaos. Okay. All right. Hmm, I'm sweaty. I'm really sweaty. I always have the tendency to just squish everything because I don't like a lot of negative space. But I think with my Ethereums, I really need to ease up on it and just learn to give them a place to breathe. I almost feel like this could be higher. What do you guys think? As if you can give me any input at the present moment. Let's see, let's see. Think, think really hard. Use your brain so. I don't really ever use this vessel, so maybe we can go like this. That's a little better. And then maybe I can even do one back here, like a smaller one. Dark Phoenix. Ah, too big. But maybe it can go down here. Okay. Oh, I thought it got munched. Small, think small. Aces, ow! Let's do one of my forgetty eye props. Look how ugly this freaking leaf is. But the new one is okay-ish. Starting to get some size. Keep growing, little one. Okay, so I'm not mad at this setup. I just need something in this corner because I'm not liking how empty it is. Although I do need to give space for this new leaf to grow because it looks like it's gonna be big. A very dehydrated queen. Oh my gosh, it's so thirsty. I'm a bad, I'm a bad, 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 bad. I'm bad. All right, I think we're good in here. I'm just gonna water now. Is it ridiculous that I have an entire EXO dedicated to Sodoroys? Yes. Does it make me happy? Yes. But you know, all I'm seeing here is the opportunity for more Sodoroys. So I guess I should get to propagating. Ideally, I'd love to do a full moss wall on all three sides and just have them like growing up the moss, but I don't like the idea of the maintenance of that. So in the meantime, this is what I'm gonna do. I am going to propagate and rehab this uh, Sodorini in a different, maybe in this video or a different video, I'm not quite sure yet, but I am excited to have more to prop so that I can fill this even more. And I think I'm going to see if my friend Jing will let me buy another Majestic. She's clean. Well, not really clean. Remember my corner of, what did I call it? My corner of laziness? It's not there anymore, but it has sort of moved around to different places, scattered everywhere. So it's actually kind of worse. Hey, I'm recording and you're tapping all over the place, bud. Oh, oh. I think I'm gonna throw up. Oh my gosh, I just got really, I just got really nauseous. Well, there goes that plan. I was going to repot something tonight before I got into bed. 
and I got super nauseous and I just realized that I forgot to take my antidepressants today and that is what happens. Usually by the end of the day, when my body has registered that I haven't gotten my dose, it just, it all comes out. <laughs> so I actually think I'm just gonna go to bed because I feel really, really sick and gross now. That hit me like a wrecking ball. Okay, see you tomorrow. Pudge, I'm over here. Buddy, I'm over here. Pudge. <laughs> Pudge, I'm over here, babe. Over here. Buddy. What the heck? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. I am feeling better from yesterday, but I do have this massive headache to deal with under there too. By the way, I'm recording on my, uh, ow. I'm recording on my iPhone because I'm importing some stuff from my memory card at the moment but I wanted to check my Mars Hydro Tent with all of the added plants and just see what my humidity and temperature is like. Okay, I can instantly feel that heat and humidity come out as soon as I opened it. And it is 84% humidity and 25 uh, Celsius, which is perfect. That's exactly where I want it to be. Everyone's looking okay still. I have so many plants to rehab down here, but I am feeling good about where we are with the environmental conditions in here. I did change out the light from the Domia, the flat panel, to uh, this Barina. Oh, I didn't cut this off. But now I have a Domia in here and this bothers me so much. The Domia lights are great. I do like them, but white light, white light, white light, white light, red don't like it. Like I mentioned, today is Sunday and I think that what I'm gonna do oh, is watch Alice's new video that goes up in about 20 minutes. And then, um, and then while I'm doing that, I'm going to just be in the kitchen cleaning all of this out. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna record it because it's kind of boring. It's just gonna be me at the sink. So I think he just ate. So I think I'm gonna do that all off camera. I think the first thing that I'm gonna do today after getting everything cleaned out is pollinate that hybrid before I like really, really miss my window because I'm getting close, I think. Anyway, oh, check back with you in a bit. <laughs> Hi, I'm so out of breath. I am really out of shape. I just walked up three flights of stairs and I feel like as tired as when I uh, ran that marathon. Anyway, um, if you guys watched my Propagating Ethereum's video, I'll throw up the thumbnail. Oh my gosh, oh, I can't breathe. Okay. You would have seen that I propagated my Ethereum Dark Phoenix for my friend Carmen, and she just came to pick up the chunk. And of course, she just, she always does stuff like this. Like she can never just like come over and just do the, the trades. <laughs> she always brings something and she always includes my husband. Like every time she brings me boba, she gets one for my husband too. And I just, I keep telling you guys, she is an earth angel and we don't deserve Carmen. And then she also dropped this off for me and it's a philodendron white princess. I had posted about it in my stories, like saying that I wanted one and then she just gave me one of her propagations and it's so freaking beautiful. Like, she could have gotten a pretty penny for this, and yet it's in my house, so. Thank you, Carmen. Honestly, like, just plant friends are, they're just amazing. I wanna cry. Hello, I am back. I actually, I was going to show you how I pollinate my anthuriums. Well, I've only done it once before, but I was gonna show you in this video how to do it. But I think I'm actually just gonna make it a totally separate video. So instead of showing you that tonight, I'm going to just be repotting these two plants. This is a variegated heliconia, and this one is a begonia sinbad. 
that I'm just like loving the growth of right now. It's like so beautiful and the last two leaves here were grown under like pretty harsh lighting not harsh but like bright light so I moved it out and now this leaf is much more the color that I was hoping for this one was grown on my plant shelf with lower light so I think it definitely likes where it's at right now but it is just busting out of here as is this one and since I did just sterilize some pond today well pond like and perlite this little mixture here I figure I would just get some repotting out of the way and then I'm going to go to sleep and watch the Euphoria finale. I kind of had something in mind of what I wanted to do tomorrow in terms of like plant chores and stuff. But honestly, I was looking at my plant shelf and it is so thirsty. There are some plants that are just, oh, it's so bad. Although it's been pretty sunny the last few days, it's been super cold. Like it's been snowing a few days too. So I've had the heater on like full blast pretty much. And all of my plants out there have just dried out so fast. Like my Thametophyllum Xanadu, my zebra plant. Um, those two are just, they're looking so sad. And obviously I'll show you that tomorrow, but I think on the to-do list for tomorrow is just going to be to get all of my plants out in the living room watered and then I think I need to finally get my seedlings repotted. Goodness, I didn't realize how root bound this thing was at the bottom. I'm just going to try and empty it, but I don't think I'm going to disturb it too much. I think I'll probably just leave it like this. Because I'd rather leave it rather than break it and then I'll just have the roots figured out once it's in the new vessel. I don't know which one should go in each. Hmm, what makes most sense? Hmm. I think I'll do this. Yeah, okay. So let's do this begonia first. I need to grab my Michael. And this is for people who are new here. I'll just be adding some mycorrhizal inoculants to my roots. Like I mentioned before, Alice and I published our first collaboration video this weekend. Obviously it would have been a while back by the time you watch this, but I can't speak for Alice, but I was kind of nervous to talk about what we were talking about. I thought that by now for sure some people were going to be like, oh, you guys are just drama or you're like talking crap. But everyone has just been so supportive and nice. And it's just nice to know that we can be like, we can just be human with the people who subscribe to us. Like they don't expect us to be like these saints or like these people who just don't have feelings or opinions and you've allowed us to share that so openly and um and yeah it's just really nice but you know my channel is not about tea it's not about drama and i try and stay out of drama the most that i can so this is in here and it's just nice that we were able to talk about it with you guys without judgment I mean, it's still early, I'm sure the more views that it gets, there's gonna be some people maybe that are offended by it, but honestly, I feel like everything we talked about is pretty valid. Yeah, I guess I just wanna thank you guys for not expecting me to be this like all good YouTuber that is not supposed to have feelings and emotions and opinions. I keep saying it, but like, of course I have opinions. You have opinions, you know, it's like, I just feel like sometimes people that create content online are supposed to put on this facade that they can please everyone and they're not supposed to be, you know, like problematic, aka having an opinion. And for the most part, I do try and keep a lot of like controversial topics off my channel. Obviously, I don't talk about things like religion or politics or whatever. And I just felt like that discussion needed to be had. And yeah, and now I feel better <laughs> that I got it off my chest. And now I don't need to talk about it anymore, which is amazing. Anyway, enough with my TED talk. These are repotted. 
feeling good and now I'm going to just get some water in it. I'm going to fill it to about here. I usually try and cover about a fourth of the substrate and then obviously the same for here. It'll be about right here and yeah, that's pretty much it for me tonight. I'm going to watch the Euphoria finale. I'm so excited but so nervous and I'll see you bright and early tomorrow. Good morning. Good morning. See what happens when I show my face? I'm so awkward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're back and happy Monday. It's freaking Monday. Okay. So, buddy, he's breathing like this because he saw me like get ready and he thinks we're gonna go somewhere, but we're not. I'm staying here. I gotta water my plants. Can you gonna help me? Are you gonna help me water my plants? Can I put you down? You're so heavy. I'm gonna stay right here. I'm not leaving you, okay? I'm gonna be right here. You don't have to be stressed. I know, I know. Okay, okay. Oh, I forgot to fill my bottle. Hold on. All right, so we are here at the shelf, obviously. Um, it's kind of a gloomy day, so the lighting is not that great. I mean, it's not that bad, but it's not great. Um, I'm going to show you the highlights of the shelf, meaning the good stuff and the bad stuff first. And then I'm just going to whip through and water because I have a very long day. So, let's start with Miss Drama over here. Remember I told you guys that when this gets thirsty, it is like the most dramatic thing ever? It's been five days since I watered this and she's acting like I mistreat her so badly. So highlight number one, highlight number two, you guys told me to use my orchid spray on my Hoyas and I've been doing it and look at this growth. The backlight is that I'm going to rotate a little bit. There's like new growth everywhere here, 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 uh, even this thingy is waking up. Back here, this new leaf, over here, and even this one is starting to wake up. Like, this thing's gonna be a bush in no time. So thank you everyone who left me the tip of using my orchid spray for my Hoyas. Amazing. Um, these, it looks like some of the older leaves are starting to go, and I'm thinking it's because of all the new growth. Like you can see these two are yellowing, but I'm not super worried because some of the older leaves um, are still nice and green and intact. Another one that's not doing great, surprisingly, is Miss Mikan's over here. It's nothing other than the fact it's bone dry, but I filled it literally not long ago. So it'll bounce back, but she's definitely showing signs of distress and like the leaves are all curled in and stuff. Oh, that's heavy. The highlight of them all. Look at how pretty she is. Are you joking? Come on. Another highlight is that my Gloriosum that I got from Alice has pushed out a new leaf. Whoa. And it's actually really starting to look like her mother plant. I will throw a photo up right here. Yeah, I was like kind of worried that it wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna get any leaves that looked like hers, but now some of the more recent leaves are really, really taking those traits. So I'm excited. It's been kind of hard to size up this guy and I don't know. The rhizome is getting a lot thicker from when we started. So it's just a matter of time now, but look at this little cutie. I think that's pretty much it for the highlight. So I'm just going to get everything watered and, and then I have another video to film, so that's great. On the menu today, in my sprayer is a uh, Kelmag and Marfil, and then, oh, I need to turn the heater off, I'm so hot. And then in my jug, I have liquid gold leaf.
Of all the places in the apartment, and you want to sit on my clean laundry. <laughs> why? Why? This is why our clothes have dog hair all over them. There's a whole bed. There's a whole bed. There's a couch. You have three dog, four dog beds. Why do you have four dog beds? One, two, three. Three dog beds. And you want to sit on your dad's underwear. Okay, you do you.
Yes, I am in the same shirt that I was wearing earlier in this video, but I did wash it. I just, honestly, at home, I recycle between the same, like, three outfits. <laughs> and I'm sure by now you guys know this. I just finished filming. I was gonna take you along and show you behind the scenes, but I am very tired. I think besides filming for the week of plant to-dos, I'm pretty much done filming for at least another two or three days. But I have a crap ton of editing to do, which is also exciting because I really like editing. I like editing more than I like filming. Tomorrow, I'm going to be repotting my seedlings because that is the one outstanding thing that I've put off for too long. And I opened up my Instagram to some more Q&As and I got some good questions in. And I think that while I'm doing that and then other stuff throughout the week, I'll keep answering the questions. Which means, well, you would have already known this by now, but I'm pretty sure all of these week of plant to-dos are gonna be like two hours long. Nothing new around here. So I'm just getting cleaned up and then I'm going to lay in bed with my puppy, watch a scary movie, ow. Watch a scary movie and chill out until I have to make dinner tonight, then I'm gonna edit. So all that to say, I'll see you tomorrow. Hi friends, I am back. I'm just wrapping up another YouTube video here and getting cleaned up. And as much as I just want to face plant into bed, I think it's time to repot the seedlings while I answer some Q and A's. I don't think I'm gonna repot all of them today. I think I'll split them. I'll do half today and then do half later in the week, but I'm looking at how many seedlings I have left and I can ensure you I do not have the mental capacity to <laughs> repot all of them, nor to answer that many questions right now. So I will leave a timestamp on the screen to fast forward through this Q&A, but if you're curious about what people ask me, then tag along. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through these one at a time in the order that they came in, but I'm not gonna be answering the ones that I've answered in previous videos. So, the first question is your least favorite and your favorite anthurium. I'm not sure if this means like, like any anthurium or specifically the ones that I own, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna assume this is a general question. This is gonna sound kind of snobby or very snobby, but I think my least favorite anthurium are the ones that you can find at the grocery store. You know, with the like really shiny surface and it like puts out those red flowers. Yeah, I'm not a fan of those. I think my favorite anthurium of all time probably is the anthurium hoffmanii red sinus. Every time I look at that plant, I just can't believe it's real. It's, it's like, it's the color of it, how dark it is, it's the venation, it's the belate texture, and it's that little pink sinus. It's so bright against just a completely dark anthurium, it's unreal. It's actually a lot easier to handle these now that they're a little bit bigger. When I repotted my seedlings in my week of plant to-dos, from I think it was January. It was such a nightmare. It's like I almost felt like I had to use tweezers because they were so small. But now that like the root systems are, are larger and the like leaf itself is bigger, it's like this is so much easier. Okay, next question. I'm gonna try and breeze through these because I would like to answer all of them if I can. Last meal on death row. I think I answered a question similar to this in another Q&A, but maybe it wasn't that question exactly, or maybe it was. And I might have a different answer. It just depends what mood I'm in. But I think if I could only choose one meal, I think it would be the crab and shrimp that my grandpa makes. It's just, we grew up eating seafood because he was a fisherman or he is a fisherman. And yeah, he just, the way he prepares it is so simple. It's not like the whole Louisiana style, which I love so much. It's just very, very simple. And it's like one of my all time favorite foods. I can pull out every single piece of meat from a crab, like my life depends on it. 
I'm sorry if you're like vegan or vegetarian. I'm not vegan or vegetarian. I would just call myself a meat minimalist. I used to be pescatarian for a little bit and then I ran a marathon and I, I kept fainting. So I just needed more protein. So I had to go, not had to go back, but I chose to go back to a meat diet. But eating too much meat makes me really sick. And I don't even really like the taste of a lot of meat. It has to be like, prepared a very specific way or I, I can't eat it. But anyway, yeah, I'm a meat minimalist, but I do love, 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 love seafood. And it's just because of the way that I grew up pretty much being raised by my grandparents. So yeah, there's my answer. Crab and shrimp specifically made by grandpa. How long after propagating alocasia from corn can you remove the humidity dome or cover? Honestly, I wouldn't remove it until you see a leaf pop in. And like, even while it's popping, like keep that humidity dome on it until the leaf pretty much emerges. Last night, I, did I delete it? Last night I couldn't sleep. So I decided to like clean up my highlights and I had a whole highlight on propagating my allocation Michalitziana maxkowskii and I think I accidentally deleted it when I was watching it. Ugh, it's gone, dang it. I would leave it on for as long as you can, to be honest. But once a new leaf emerges, I would take the dome off so that you can start acclimating it down to lower humidity because unless you plan to give your alocasia that kind of um, conditions all the time, you don't really want it to get too used to the like 100% humidity levels. So once you see that the leaf has unfurled, I would take off whatever is covering it which reminds me that I need to cover my corms. I forgot about the corms that I harvested with Alice in our video and I forgot to cover it. So hopefully it hasn't dried out. I'm not gonna touch it, but I do need to cover this. I'm just gonna do this. I've gotten this question a few times. This is gonna be a future note to myself to insert a tattoo tour. <laughs> which is kind of embarrassing, but I'm happy to show it to you guys. So I will play that and then we will jump back into the video. Next question is favorite type of music or artist. I think that I listen to indie the most, I think, or like, honestly, it kind of varies what mood I'm in. I don't listen to country. Um, I don't listen to like, what is that? Uh, like house music. Well, I used to when I was younger. I haven't really been into it. A lot lately but yeah right now I'm really really into indie alternative obviously the normal like pop like the stuff on the radio um, I do like hip-hop I love oldies because of how I grew up like some of my favorites are like the Bee Gees ABBA the Beatles oh gosh that's kind of embarrassing do I want to do I want to share my Spotify playlist do I I'll have to think about it in terms of a favorite artist Oh man, that's a really, really hard question. Let's go through my playlists. It feels wrong to just pick one. 
I'm like going through my playlist. I'm like, you're my favorite, you're my favorite, you're my favorite. Okay, so I will say one of my favorite like indie folk artists, well, they're like a three, they're a band, is probably Daughter. They're just, they're so good. They just make me feel things. Why is this like the hardest question I have ever answered in my entire life? I love Benjamin Francis Leftwich, of course, Angus and Julia Stone. Okay, now I'm just naming off everybody, but I really, I have too many. So, okay, in like the indie folk genre, those are my three. I, I don't even know if that's like my top, but that's all I can think about right now. In terms of like mainstream pop artists, I love Ari. She's one of my favorites. Ariana Grande, um, Kehlani, SZA, Khalid, duh, Adele. In terms of just like other artists, I love... I love Biba Doobie. She's like indie folk rock. Tim Atlas, he's my friend, but his music is like absolutely incredible. Foster the People, Tame Impala. Oh, how did I forget Tame Impala? Dayglow, The Weeknd. Okay, now this, I'm, this is going for way too long. You get it. Maybe I'll share my Spotify playlist if I'm not too shy, but there's that. How do you deal with plant envy, like wanting something, but you'd have to sell an organ? You know what? I used to feel this a lot. There was a point when I started getting into like imported aeroids that I just had this insatiable hunger <laughs> for plants that I could not get. And whenever I saw people have it, it just, man, the jealousy. But I don't know, I got to a point where I'm like, if I'm not able to ever own that plant, I don't really care. I don't know, it's just one day, I just stopped really caring that much. Um, Alice said something in our little discussion video together that like really resonated with me. We were talking, we were actually talking about Instagram and like whatever, being an influencer, or whatever you wanna call it. She said that like, you set these goals for yourself, for your social media, and then you think that's gonna like, make you super happy and really fulfill you. And then you hit it, and then you immediately want like the next thing, and you're just never happy with what you have. I feel like that with my plants. There are so, so many plants that I would love to have, but either I am not in the circle to ever attain one because they're only available to like botanists and horticulturists, but, or if you're just, you know, in the elite or whatever. And then there's the other plants that I just know that I'd never either be able to afford or would never want to spend that much money on it even if I could afford it or got to the point where I could afford it. Now I'm just like really learning to like love on my plants and what? Pudge, you ruined the vibe. Sorry, that's just my crazy puppy. It's really nice to appreciate plants and of course appreciate other people's plants. And if there's a plant that you really, really, really want, like I know that it can be like painful sometimes to see everyone around you get it or just it keeps being rubbed in your face on Instagram. All I can say is at some point, every plant in your collection, you were like, oh my gosh, I would die without that plant. And you wanted it so bad and then you got it. And then you're just on to the next thing, right? So just, Enjoy your collection, look around and just be thankful for what you do have. And just know that you've got like your whole life to collect plants. The plant prices will always fluctuate. Just because you don't have it now doesn't mean you'll never have it. And kind of gives you something to look forward to, you know? It's like, who knows what my collection will look like in a decade or 20 years or whatever. But that's kind of the excitement of it is that like you just, you never really know. So that would be my best advice. I'm sorry if that was not good enough for you. Plant related viruses, worried my variegation on one leaf is a virus. It's hard to tell without looking at it. Viruses, they come in all different forms in terms of how they show on a plant. So it's hard to tell without looking at it. If you're watching this and you'd like to send me photos, please send it to me. I am not an expert. I don't even have that much experience myself with plant viruses, but I'd be happy to take a look at it. Have you done any plant related studies? No, no. I'm just a hobbyist, honestly. I don't, um, I do a lot of obviously like reading a lot of studies and following a lot of botanists and horticulturists, but 
in terms of an actual study, I no, I don't think that I would really ever take this hobby that far because I'm not looking to ever educate or work in the field. Like the only kind of thing I would do with this hobby is just continue with this YouTube channel, but I don't really have the desire to really study it. But I am always looking to like read um, studies and to like learn more obviously, but I don't feel like I'm, I would ever be at a point where I'd want to like actually study it. I answered this one already, but it's a quick one. Can you speak or understand Filipino? Um, yes, I can understand Tagalog almost fluently. I can't understand Ilocano, even though I have both languages in my family, I cannot understand a lick of Ilocano, but Tagalog I can pretty much fluently, especially if you speak Taglish. So like throwing in some English words between a few Tagalog words, I can pretty much keep up with the entire conversation. But the weird thing is, is I can't speak it, like not at all. It's like a one way street. <laughs> I don't know why. We never really were taught Tagalog growing up. I'm not even really sure why I know it because it's not like, I, I don't remember my grandparents ever really teaching me um, the language besides speaking it to me. Yeah, it's kind of a miracle that I even understand it. I think my middle sister can understand it a little bit, but not as fluently as I can. And then my little sister, my littlest sister can't. Part of it is because my parents were immigrants. So they came from the Philippines when they were young and they sort of had that mentality that like, you know, in order to be successful in America, you have to really assimilate and learn the language and be as American as possible. And my dad is very like success driven. He's always been that way. And he kind of raised us to be that way too. So I know a lot of people might look down on this and even he regrets it now when we've brought it up to him, but he didn't allow my grandparents to teach us Tagalog because he didn't want us to, I guess, talk like we weren't American. Like he didn't want us to have like a Filipino accent or whatever because he thought that might hinder us in life. But I think what he forgot is that we're first gen Americans. <laughs> so either way we would, we would have been speaking English and have been surrounded by people who speak English. And if I were given the opportunity to obviously have a kid myself, I would definitely want them to learn Tagalog. Um, and I just think that it's so beneficial to know a second language. So I am thankful that my grandma talked to me enough in Tagalog growing up that I can understand it. Cause I really like being able to just like sit with people in like the older generation of my family and like keep up with conversations and be a part of it. So yeah, that's really nice. I wish that I could speak it, but it's too late for me, you guys. I tried the, like, what is that called? Like, <laughs> um, Rosetta Stone. I just, anything like learning, I can't do it. Unless I'm like super, super interested. I just, I totally zone out. I like that I said that was gonna be a short one and then it turned into like the longest answer. Favorite Hoya in your collection? Definitely my Hoya Callistophila. That was an unexpected favorite. It was a plant that like was just given to me. I think Alice was the one that gave it to me and I wasn't really into the Hoyas that look like reptiles when she gave it to me, but it just grew on me so much. And now I just, I want more. But that one is like the one where I look at it in my Hoya cabinet and I'm just like, I love you. The best beginner slash easy care Ethereum. Not a Clarinervium, that's for sure. Clarinerviums all hate me, even though I love them so much. I find Ethereums to all have like the same type of care. I will say that one of the first Ethereums I ever got was an Ethereum Crystallinum, and I still really, really love those. Those ones aren't very difficult. I find hybrids to be a lot more vigorous and resilient than its pure forms. I find that my hybrids are less susceptible to like fungal things or whatever. But again, it's, it's all very similar. 
The only thing I would recommend if you are new to anthuriums is make sure to give it airflow because one thing you'll find with anthuriums that isn't as common with philodendrons, it's not that it doesn't happen, but it's not as common, but anthuriums are just like so susceptible to fungal things. So just be careful if you're getting an anthurium and you're using like a humidity dome or you're using a greenhouse, just make sure that you're giving your anthuriums lots of fresh air and air that's like not stagnant because if it's too humid and that air is kind of just sitting there, you're gonna get some funky things happening to your leaves, trust me. If you could hybridize two plants, which ones would you pick? E, Z. Okay, let's do an Anthurium hybrid and a Philodendron hybrid. This is all just imaginary, okay? I would love to see a Philodendron round form or dark vein crossed with a philodendron soderoi. That's my like my dream hybrid for a philodendron. For an anthurium, I would love to see. Let's do something that's a little bit more attainable because I was gonna do like a Hoffmannii red sinus with like a Windlingeri, Windlingeri, Windlingeri. But let's do something that's a little bit more common. So I would love to see. Ooh. Anthurium forgetii dark form crossed with a Waroquianum. It's gotta be the dark form forgetii though, not the ones with the silver veins, not just dark leaves, but like dark venation as well. I'd love to know which hybrids you guys would um, combine because I don't know why like imagining it or daydreaming about it is so fun. The opportunities. Do you have any future tattoo plans? Yes, I do. I eventually want to get Pudge's portrait on me somewhere on my arm. I'm thinking, I don't know, somewhere on this arm, but there are only two artists that I want to go to and they are always fully booked. And whenever they do have any openings, it's always at a time where I can't shell out that much money. The timing just hasn't worked out, but I will throw up a photo of some of their work here. Incredible, like I, I just would not get it done by anyone else just because a portrait that small, especially with a pug, like it can go wrong so quickly. So I definitely know that when I get it done, it's got to be by the right artist and artists that are well seasoned in doing pet portraits with a thin needle. That is one that I want to get done. And then I also have been thinking about a sternum piece. So like, sorry, you can't see, but like, going from like here down here, like somewhere, just somewhere in the sternum area. I would really love that. And then I also want to get one butt cheek <laughs> tattooed. I don't know why, no one's gonna see it, but I just want it. But no immediate plans, honestly. My money this year is going to be going towards the trips that we have to go on. I don't really have a couple hundred or thousand to just shell out on some tattoos right now but I have been itching for one and it's true that when you get one, you just want more. And I don't have that many as you would have obviously seen in the little tattoo tour. I don't wanna be like head to toe covered in tattoos. I don't feel like that image or whatever really suits me because I look like an Oompa Loompa. And along this line, someone said, what is your favorite tattoo? So I have to pick two, I can't just pick one. I will say that one of my favorites is my big back piece. That one, I just, I love the artwork. Um, Charmaine Olivia is one of my all time favorite artists. And I'm just really like grateful to have one of her pieces on my back. In terms of tattoos for the meaning, hmm, that's a hard question. Maybe the one on my thigh, the 26.2, just because running a marathon was literally the most insane thing I've ever done my entire life, it was so difficult and I still cannot believe that I did it. So probably that one because I would say that's probably one of my greatest accomplishments in life that I never thought I would be able to say. But yeah, I ran 26.2 miles. It was snowing that day, it was so cold. I pulled a muscle at mile two, cracked a toenail at mile six. She was struggling, she wasn't doing good. Um, what's your favorite treat baked good bubble tea? 
So bubble tea, I think my favorite just has to be the regular milk tea. I don't like it too sweet. I like it more on the earthy side. If it's too sweet, I can't really drink it. I just get, I feel kind of sick when I have too much sugar. As far as a treat, it's like a baked treat. To be honest, I don't really eat a lot of baked treats, but if I had to pick one, I really love cream cheese croissants. So good. Any plants you would not put in semi-hydro? Love you and Pudge. Greetings from Germany. Oh, thank you. Okay, so there's kind of a an easy answer to that and then there's a hard answer. So the, the easy answer is I wouldn't put any plants larger than, I would say an eight inch pot in passive hydro, just because that is a lot of freaking substrate, like passive hydro substrate to use for like a 10 inch pot or something. It's already a lot for an eight inch pot. So pretty much any plants that is living in no drainage are on the smaller side for me. Um, in terms of like a plant that I wouldn't put in passive hydro because of maybe the conditions it likes or having like super sensitive roots or something. I feel like I haven't met a plant that hated passive hydro. I don't know, I, sorry, I don't know how to answer that. I feel like any plant really can take to passive hydro as long as you transition it well and your substrate is clean and aerated. Like there's never been a plant I've come across that I'm like, oh, this has to be in soil. Like there's no way I could do passive hydro to it. Yeah, sorry, I don't really have a good answer for that one. Okay, so the next question is tips for making new plant friends. I feel like I'm not the best person to give advice on this because I truly, 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 truly think that the friendships that I have are purely based on luck. Yeah, I feel like I just, I honestly got lucky. It wasn't like a strategy for me. I didn't join the plant group that Jing admined in the very beginning so that I could make friends in real life because I'm just, I'm not that kind of person. I feel like I'm sort of a lone wolf. I don't know, I have two sisters and we're basically like friends and I've never really felt like in that department I was lacking. I do have like friends from my childhood who are still some of my best friends. But in terms of like local friends that are specifically plant friends, all I did was join a Facebook group. I interacted as much as I could or as much as I felt, felt comfortable with contributing to a post if someone was like, show me or whatever. So I would just contribute that way and kind of just like make my name more, more recognizable, I guess. And at the time there wasn't a ton of people in the group. I feel like there was only like 300 members or something and it's up to 6,000 now, which is crazy. But I got pretty lucky with my, my super, super close friends right now. We were all just really interested in ordering predatory mites and or we like showed interest on a post. I think it was Erin that posted it and then she just put us all in a group chat and was like here, I thought this might be easier to like do communication for the group mites order and it kind of just took off from there. Alice and I were already friends at that point but weren't like super, super close to everybody else in the chat, including Erin. Like I had gotten a plant from her before but we weren't like I wouldn't consider us like friends. Like we didn't really talk outside of like whatever we were trading or whatever, like I was buying from her. Yeah, this this might order put us all in a group chat and it just, yeah, it just took off from there. I think we just kind of quickly realized that we were all very similar. We ha all had sort of like similar sense of humor and just we were like the same kind of people and we totally just got along and that's how it started. So. Again, I just, I do think a lot of it is luck because of this might order because I'm totally not the type that would be like, does anyone want to be friends with me? But I think if you're in a plant group and you find someone that you really like jive with or you guys like laugh at a lot of the same things or you just feel like you guys would just make really good friends, I don't know, like maybe like don't be scared to just pop in their DMs and just say hi, you know? I think it's like initially starting that one-on-one -on -one conversation that's the hardest or like the most awkward because I can even tell you that like when me and Alice first started like getting to know each other and we were like arranging our first trade, 
it was like awkward and I was like really nervous to meet her for the first time. You just have to get over the initial awkwardness or like feeling of like, not that you're gonna be rejected, but that maybe they don't wanna be friends with you or something. But you'll just never know until you actually put yourself out there. So that is my best advice on that front. Join a local Facebook group. Be active in the Facebook group. If you see somebody or a few people that you guys just realize you click, throw them in a group chat on Messenger and say, hey, we should be friends. I need to take a break because I'm pretty sure that 75% of my lungs and my nasal cavities are made of soil. The soil is really dry, I haven't used it in a while, and it's just so dusty, there's dust everywhere. Favorite place you have traveled to? Oh, so easy. I'm not well-traveled, and a lot of it is because I choose to not travel. I get anxiety being really far away from home. Like, you guys, I legit had a panic attack in Hawaii. I was like on the edge of this like cliff, and all you could see was water and it was so beautiful. I was surrounded by tropical trees and tropical plants and it was like literal paradise. And then I had a moment where I was like, I cannot see anything but ocean. And I'm on an island and my house is so far away. Like I have to get on a plane to get back to my house and my safe space and I freaked out. And kind of from that moment on, I was just super anxious to get home and I didn't really want to be there anymore. Vacations longer than a week kind of stressed me out and even just the thought of being like on a different continent across the world gives me mad anxiety. And also because we can't really travel with Pudge, I just don't like being away from him. I know that sounds kind of pathetic and people will say, oh, you'll regret it when you die or whatever, but I feel like there are just people who like to travel and who have that itch. And then there's people that just are happy with staying local and doing fun stuff around them. I don't mind if it's a road trip, but I don't know, I don't know why. It's like the idea of having to get on a plane just to get back home. I'm just like, nope, 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 nope. So with all that said, my absolute favorite trip was my trip to Banff in Alberta. Oh my gosh, that trip changed my life. And I talked about it in a Q&A in my last, I think it was my last week of plant to do's or the ones before that where I talked about that trip. Life changing. I love the Rocky Mountains. I would love if half of my ashes could be spread along the Rocky Mountains <laughs> and then the other half into space so that I can go back to being stardust. What is your preference? Climbing, crawling, or simply trailing? My preference are crawling plants. I just tend to really like the big pillowy plants that crawl. Those are among my favorite and I like that they're they're easier. You don't really have to worry about like extending poles and making sure that it doesn't outgrow the pole so that it doesn't revert size and stuff. It's like as long as your pot is big enough and your crawler has somewhere to go, it's gonna keep growing. And yes, it does get annoying to have to like keep sizing up or whatever or finding rectangular pots that aren't super ugly, but my preference are still crawling plants. Uh, you mentioned, you always mention you don't like reels. Why is that? Is it a certain style of reels that you don't like? <laughs> yeah. It's not that I hate all reels. There are a lot of good reels. I watch reels all day of animals. I can watch those every single day. I can, I can watch reels about cooking. You know the cooking shows where they don't talk, it's just the sounds of the cooking? Can watch that all day long. It's really the plant specific reels that make me feel like I'm on TikTok. Where it's like the same audios are being used or the same trending audios are being used where you like voice it over and it's supposed to be funny and stuff. I just don't like going on Instagram and feeling like I'm on TikTok. And I feel like a lot of the content is just recycled ideas from other people and it's not super original and it's just repetitive and and now it's just boring to me. So honestly, like no tea, but I'm making a confession right now. If I follow you on Instagram and you make a lot of reels, I probably have you muted. Just because I go on Instagram to see plants 
and when I'm just bombarded with reels on my feed of just the same like, I don't know, you know like those reels where like they're all sneaking back in with the plant, like trying to not let their husband see their plant. I don't know, I can't really explain it. It's just like those like cringy reels that are supposed to be funny that I don't really find funny because my sense of humor is broken. And just any reels that feel like they should be on TikTok. Don't like them. Are there any plants in your collection you would or would not buy again and why? Okay, uh, yes actually. So I'm hoarding philodendron soderoids right now or anything with soderoid in it. I just love the way they look. They are easy growers and I love them so much. So that's one that I would buy multiples of if given the chance. Philodendron gloriosum. I would love all the different forms. In terms of ones that I have that I wouldn't buy again, Anthurium clarinervium is one of them just because I have killed every single clarinervium that has come into my house besides the one that was gifted to me by Amanda. It's one of her seedlings and that one is, it's okay, it's got, it's got one leaf left, Amanda, not kidding. Claire Nervium's just freaking hate me and I think I just have to accept it. I love them. I find them to be beautiful. They're one of my, probably one of my favorite anthuriums, but I don't know why they just don't like me. They really don't. They've been selling those locally for so cheap, like, like comically cheap. I think the last time I saw them on sale, they were like $9 each for like a pretty substantial four inch pot with multiple plants in it, but I just won't do it because I know how it's gonna end up. Same reason why I would never purchase a tie again, because I'm gonna send it into the afterlife. That's just how it goes in this house. I'm very real with myself in what I know that I can and can't take care of. And I've just learned to like pick my battles, you know? So that is the answer to that. Do you want kids? If so, how many? Honestly, this was something that my husband and I wrestled with for a while and we didn't, until very, very recently agree that we decided that we wanted kids. We just kept going back and forth. We just, you know, we like our life right now. We like our freedom. We like our space. We like our schedules. We like the amount of responsibility that we have. We weren't sure if we were the type of people that would make good parents or would want to be parents. But I think the addition of like the kids in our lives, like my niece and you know, his siblings, kids, it just kind of, I don't know. Kids are really fun, honestly. I love my niece so much. I love all of the little babies in our family. They make me very happy, so. But yeah, we do want kids. And two, two is our number. I don't wanna just have one because I loved having siblings and I would want my kids to have the same. I would want my kids to have the same upbringing and experience that I did, hopefully, if they get along. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, three is too many, can't afford three, but two is good. I have so much dust in my throat, it's not even funny. I think that's all I can handle for now. There's so many questions. I really don't think I'm going to get through a lot of these, which kind of sucks. I really don't want this to turn into a three hour video. My goal is two hours and under. Maybe I'll do like um, a repot with me. That's specifically a and a repot where I can answer the rest. And yeah, I think that's what I'll do actually. And I'll try and put it out very shortly after this one goes up. My seedlings are potted. I just need to find a place for them. I still have a whole tray of them, you guys. I've got seedlings coming out of my ears at this point, but I only have two trays left and probably about 40, 40 seedlings left or 50. Oh my gosh. Hello. Hello. Hello? What the f <laughs> I thought it was a scammer. I really like messing with scammers. Okay, anyway, I don't even remember what I was saying. 
So I think that's all I have left in me for today. I've just, I filmed another video today and I'm just feeling really tired and I do have a lot of editing to do. I do want to get some sleep because I slept like crap last night. So if I don't see you later, I will see you tomorrow. Ow. Hi guys. So I took a break for a day because um, I have been filming non-stop as I mentioned earlier in this video or no I mentioned in my Ethereum propagation video that I'm gonna be traveling quite a bit this year fortunately and unfortunately fortunately it's for good things my best friend's wedding um, seeing the birth of my new niece or nephew and and then again for like our first family trip with my husband's with my husband's family It'll actually be the first time that we go anywhere together where like all the kids are going to be there and yeah we just haven't really had one of those before so it'll be nice to spend some time with his siblings and their kids because we really hardly ever get to see them but I am just very like I'm very anxious to to travel and um, not feeling that great about it but we have been hardcore isolating for two years and it's just it's just time so anyway i just repeated everything i said in the last video since i'll be gone from basically like back and forth between next month and then july yeah so like most of the spring and summer i like really have to get ahead with filming and just have enough videos in the bank so that I can actually take vacations and have enough videos to go up while I'm away. There's a chance I might have to skip some Wednesday videos in that time, but I'm really gonna try not to, just because I have to <laughs> fund these trips. So because I've been filming so much, my voice is just, it's not that it's like it went away, but it, it kept cracking like a prepubescent teenager and I just I couldn't get through anything I was trying to say so I took a day off and I'm still feeling a little bit raspy right now but I missed you so I am here watering my Millsbow plants and I'm also kind of moving some things around I took out the light that was on the bottom of my propagation area because it was just way too strong it was getting super hot in here so I really do need to buy some new grow lights. I'm gonna go with the Barina ones that I mentioned in another video. I think it was a, a week of plant chores where I installed my new lights. So I do need to get some more of those because they're my favorite right now. Ooh, look at these yummy alocasia roots. Yeah, everything just dries out so freaking fast in there. And like some of my leaves are curling because it's just so hot and everything is just drying out too fast. So I gotta get things a little bit cooler, but I figure why not water with you guys and show ya what I'm doing. I was gonna repot some allocations in this video. My Watson really needs a repot. Like I would love all of this to be underneath the substrate and it's just becoming like a tree. But I think that I'm gonna do a dedicated alocasia video. Not really like alocasia care, it's just how I care for alocasias. And the reason that I word it that way is because I never want this channel to come across as like too teachy, you know, like this is the way to do it because my motto is just do whatever the hell works for you and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So it's just, the way I care for alocasia is what has worked for me. And then I'll do some repotting and blah, blah, blah. So I do think that could be its own video. So I'm gonna hold off on doing that for now, which is okay because I have been editing all day long and I'm just kind of tired. And I was gonna try and post a freaking reel on Instagram because seriously, Instagram is punishing me. It's punishing me, like, for not making reels. Like, my, I feel like nobody is seeing my posts anymore, and I hate when people, like, whine about this. But, you know, it is a little bit frustrating because 
I do get, I, I would say that probably most of my YouTube subscribers are carryover from Instagram. So I do really rely on that app to kind of market this teeny tiny channel. I just don't want to give in to the algorithm and give Instagram what it wants because I don't really enjoy making reels. I don't really like seeing reels. But yeah, it's like, I almost feel like I'm being shadow banned. <laughs> this allocation is like leaning one way. Why are you doing that? I actually saw this question come up in the Q&A. So I think I'll just answer it right now since I thought I would chat about it anyway. Someone was asking to talk about like the behind the scenes of YouTube and just like, I guess doing social media in general, but I want to specifically talk about YouTube. I just realized the spraying is probably so loud in the mic. So I'm just gonna water regularly, but I need to steal some of this water in my jug. Okay, so yeah, someone was asking me behind the scenes stuff on YouTube, like how to start, um, how it's planned out. Uh, I don't know if I'd ever do a dedicated video on it, but maybe I would just include it in like a Q&A. All of my, ow, all of my YouTube videos are pretty much planned out up until the end of May. There's a lot of things that I don't show you in the plant room or in my house because I need it for a future YouTube video that I don't want to like reveal until that video. One of them was the Monstera Albo that you would have seen in my no drainage hole all my plants in no drainage holes part one video and I have I've had that thing forever growing in that thing forever and I've wanted to show like at least on Instagram kind of what I was doing but I knew that the no drainage hole videos were coming up on the schedule so I just kind of had to keep it a secret yeah basically all of my stuff is planned out like months in advance and I'm filming things way in advance before it comes out so sometimes like what you see on instagram maybe like in my stories and then what appears on youtube it's like very delayed but yeah it's kind of hard to like sync things up and not spoil things for youtube by showing it on instagram first but yeah all that to say i feel like some people think that like i just film during the week and then I edit it and then it goes up on Saturday. Like I already have all my videos for the next few weeks. Like this video is not gonna be going up for another like month, I think, but I'm already almost done editing it because I've been editing it every day. So it kind of took a long time to get into a good swing and I just had one good week that I could get ahead. I really just took advantage of it and I'm so glad because now I'm like breathing a little bit easier and I'm not so pressed for time but yeah like I would say that the the lazy poll is probably one of the videos that I was like super anxious to like talk about on Instagram and post about it on Instagram but I was like I have to wait like I don't want to like spoil anything but then I freaking like <laughs> Like unknowingly, I included it in my December favorites and like went into detail about the lazy poll in December and honestly It didn't even click with me that I had like talked about it before my lazy poll video was gonna go up because I wanted to show progress I wanted to show just like all of these things to show you how it was doing And then I thought okay, it's such a small snippet of the video Like maybe nobody is gonna notice and nobody will ask because it's so ugly But it was like the number one thing that was asked of me and and then like people started tagging me on Instagram trying it out and I was like well there goes that <laughs> so uh, yeah, quite a bit of planning that goes into YouTube and obviously I don't have like a team like, you know, big influencers or big YouTubers. They have like a whole team of people on filming days, someone edits for them and I just don't have that luxury nor do I think I would ever want it. Uh, like I think no matter how big this channel got, if it ever did get big, I think that I'd still want to do things on my own, but I really do love editing and I almost feel like part of the editing process is even more of a way to like engage with you guys and make it more personal to me by adding like my own touches, whether it's captions or just the way that I'm editing or including certain 
bloopers or behind the scenes stuff and I just feel like no matter how much you communicate with an editor like I don't I don't think it'll be the same I enjoy editing so I don't mind it it's the filming really that is exhausting for me setting up shots cleaning up talking for hours at a time I'm still not convinced I'm cut out for this life but I still <laughs> pretend like I am anyway talking about sort of like keeping things under wraps while you're planning out your schedule. I have been working on this video idea for a couple, well, probably more than a month now, and I'm still in like the planning process, getting everything I need for it. I'm just like really, really, really excited about it, but the only thing is that that video is not gonna go up until the end of April, possibly the beginning of May. And that means that I like have to hide <laughs> this thing for the next few months so that I don't spoil it for the video but luckily like we're getting longer days now we're getting more sunny days so I should be able to film outside of the plant room there's your clue it's happening in the plant room and no it's not a massive grow tent but yeah that's gonna be a bit of a challenge because this is like my main filming area oh my gosh I'm so out of breath my scalp room is getting so big. I like cannot even believe how large this thing is. It started as a tiny little four inch pot and it's just blown up. It is going to outgrow this Millsbo super soon. Where's the water? Why is everything so far? I always trap myself in this little corner here. I can see some corms growing on the scalp room, which I'm so excited about because I am so down for having more scalp rums, but that's a little corm right there. And I saw one more. I think there's one right here. So anyway, sorry, this isn't, I wasn't gonna officially show you what I was doing. I was actually just going to check in and tell you why I was missing and let you know that I would see you tomorrow instead. But of course I just kept blabbing on. Oh, look at my, come on. This one's got like yellow variegation. The other ones have always given me white. So this is the first yellow one. And I thought that it was gonna harden off to white by now, but it hasn't. But these ones were never yellow when they emerged. It's only this one. But it's really pretty. I like the contrast of it. I don't mind it at all. Uh, it is very thirsty though. Do you wanna focus? I still cannot believe that Carmen gave this to me. It is so freaking beautiful and it's pushing out a new leaf. I'm so happy. Tomorrow's Friday. I don't really think I'm gonna do anything besides edit, so I probably won't check in with you guys, but on Saturday, I'm going to Aaron's house with Alice and we're filming and we're helping Aaron do some big repots and stuff. I am going to be doing a dedicated video on what I do at Aaron's, but I think in, in this video, I'll show you some behind the scenes and us just kind of hanging out. I think that would be kind of fun. I guess that's one of the perks of sitting through these insanely long videos is you get to see more behind the scenes stuff. So yeah, I just, I have to make sure that all my gear is ready to go. I have to clear up my memory card and I just have to kind of prepare. So I just don't, I just don't think that doing like plant stuff around the house or like plant chores is probably a good idea. I also want to save my voice. So I guess all of that to say, I will see you on Saturday. I don't know what angle I want though. Oh, I want it to, I want it like this, but it's gonna be in the shadow. Goofy. Goofy. <laughs> okay, Frenna. Oh. There you go. Oh,
ほーほI didn't feel like we should move the pot out from the wall. Okay. This big flag button. We're going to do it at an angle so that it's straight. So it's got to go like that. Yeah. Like not in the center of the pot though? Well, no. We yeah, in the center. center. Yeah. But like that. Okay. So I'm going to do this thing again. She'll take a fry. A fry? No. She's like, no, but I see a burger. Right? She's like, my mom literally just told you. Sweet, sweet chicken. Fry. Okay, so together. I'll put it here. Yeah. Let me know Later when you're ready for it. <laughs> what did Huxley steal out of your tent the other night? I was cackling. I was like, bro, like the one. <laughs> I was like, oh, this whole video is just like Huxley, like coming in and out. Grab one. <laughs> it was um, it was a dead chonk. Oh, the basically it's basically silver. Yeah, it's basically silver. <laughs> it's like, an expensive chunk. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't eat it though. So cute. But he 
Who's taller than his mouth? Such a little asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's he's a very nice boy. He's just mischievous. He's mischievous, yeah. But he's never growl at a person. Oh, that's a good boy. Mm-hmm. That's key goodness right there. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't bark unless someone's at the door. Which actually, I, like I said, I find is a valuable mm-hmm. asset. Yeah, but he is a little asshole sometimes. Is he with Fudge? No. Oh, yeah. What does he do? Does he spite you? Sometimes. He acts just like Huxley. I'm not kidding. They no, but like so much of each other. Does, does Pudge know what makes you upset and does he do it when <laughs> you wronged him? No. Yeah, that's Okay, so a little, little bit not. Yeah. So he'll like, Huxley will be fine. He'll be like sleeping. He'll, he'll like go to his crate on his own and sleep there while I'm working. And then if I decide I want to go outside, for two minutes and come back and he did, I didn't take him with him, but he'll just start pulling all the coasters off the coffee table. Oh <laughs> my god! Like you're just literally sleeping. Yeah. Brand, I'm, I'm full too. The rope is gonna come out. We're using the same clear rope that I used in my Moscow video. Hello, happy Sunday. I thought that I would end this week of plant to-dos with a repot. So let me show you what I got yesterday. Alice and I were like so exhausted after errands, but we made it to the mall and we went to a store called Muji where I get all of my sort of like organizational stuff for around the house. I use, oh, I use the bins to organize stuff in here and I sort of had this epiphany the other, not the other day, but like a few days ago that I needed some like pots for my crawlers. You can see my Gloriosum here is due for a repot and I was looking in my cabinet and I was like, I have these bins that would work perfectly. So these are the two sizes that I grabbed. They're very similar. One is just a bit wider than the other and I just felt like this seriously would be so perfect for a crawling plant and I like that it is still translucent enough that I can see the roots the only thing is there are these little holes here so what I'll do is just take a piece of plastic and I'll just cut a square to cover this so that like soil and water don't spill out but um, I'm just gonna try and pot one today I think my Gloriosum should fit 
in here, but I'm going to take a look at the root system first just to see what we're working with. But yeah, if this works out, then I'll probably be moving all of my crawlers to these kinds of pots. So in total, after tax, I paid $22.99 for four containers, which is not bad for a pot. This is one of my oldest Gloriosums. It really took a hit in the winter, as it does almost every winter. I think I've had this one for two and a half years now. It's a four leafer. I mean, it's not terrible, but it, the leaves used to be a lot bigger. This leaf just unfurled without any issues. So that is how you know spring is just around the corner. I think it just knows what to do. And I have been trying to keep my heater at a minimum over the last few days because I noticed that it was unfurling. But you know, it's still quite cold here. But anywho, this is the pot situation it's in right now. You can see it's getting towards the end of the pot and there used to be a lot more leaves here, I think. I don't actually know how long this rhizome is. I have not TLC'd this plant in probably over a year. So it's overdue and I think one of these new rectangular planters are going to be perfect. Oh yeah, so I have just uncovered the rhizome. It's pretty long and you can see that all those leaves have dropped because I did plant it at one end so that it could crawl across the pot. But now we are at the end. This thing is so heavy. root situation it actually looks really really good and i think i'm gonna do the same mixture um in the new plants here i'll put leka down at the bottom if i can scrounge enough leka that is i don't even think i have anymore i might have black leka but otherwise we might have to do just straight soil which i'm also not super worried about I might take some propagations of this because the rhizome is so long, but I don't want to cut too many roots off of this plant. Got some root breakage here, actually a lot of root breakage, but I'm not super worried. The system is still quite robust and this, um, this plant actually has never had any mycorrhizae added to it. So I think that no matter what, it's gonna, it's gonna be okay. I am seeing an opportunity to cut. I have two separate root systems here and I feel like this should be enough to sustain these four leaves, hopefully. But I think I'm gonna chop right here just because I don't want um, all of this rhizome taking up space in the vessel or in the container because I don't, I don't wanna have to repot this anytime soon. And I do wanna give it enough space to be able to crawl and really get settled without me having to move it so soon after. So I am going to chop, yeah, I think I'm gonna chop, or I'll maybe leave this root on it and I'll chop like right here.
and as usual I'm just going to be cleaning up this chunk but I think I'm gonna give you guys a different angle and move the camera over here so essentially I just want to remove all of this old sheath This is all I'm going to clean it. I'm not going to be super invasive. Um, I just wanted to make sure all of that sheath was gone. So now I need some new soil. I think that it should fit pretty well in this smaller planter. I think. Like I'll pot it this way and then let it crawl that way. I wish it was slightly deeper, but again, still not super duper worried about it. Um, so let's do that. And I did find some LECA. Before I do that though, obviously I'm not gonna leave this on. If it doesn't leave that sticky residue or I'm gonna be so mad. Before I do anything, I do need to cut a plastic to cover this. I'm gonna sneeze, I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, that was a big one. Oh my gosh, my nose. All right, so I cut a piece of plastic to fit right here. Okay, doesn't fit. Okay, doesn't fit. Um, I need to trim it down a little bit. And then I'm gonna fill the bottom with Leca. My soil is pretty dry from just looking at it, so I'm not gonna worry too much about letting it callus over for like an hour. I'm just not gonna water it right away. I'll probably water it sometime tonight, but I'm adding my rooting hormone mixture, which is rooting hormone powder, sulfur dust, and, <laughs> and cinnamon. I legit thought my husband just let out the largest burp while I was filming, but it was just my, my dishwasher. Thank you. 
Got my little jar of rocks and I have one that's gonna be a pretty perfect size to hold it up while it's getting stabilized in this new pot. And obviously it will be a lot better once the soil is damp, but it is super dry right now and I should be wearing a mask because it is dusty in here. So it's leaning forward, so I'm just gonna be adding this rock right here. To hold it in place. And then I will continue to fill. All right, it's in and I actually am so happy with it. I thought that it would be nice if it was deeper, but I'm actually quite happy with it. This is about how tall the Elho pots are. So it's not much different than the rectangular planters I've been using just with this. Now I can actually see what's going on under here and know when to water. This new leaf back here is facing the wrong way, but I'm hoping that once it's on the shelf, it'll kind of figure out its way because now it's kind of, yeah, it's just, it's a little confused right now. But I'm hoping it turns this way towards the light. No, okay. But otherwise it's in and I'm super, super, super happy. I think I'll be grabbing more of these for sure while it's on sale. I've never actually seen Muji do a sale like that where it's like 20% off on like so many things. So I definitely want to grab a few while I still can. So yeah, I will water this one in about an hour um, and let that cut end callus up before this substrate gets wet, but feeling good. All right, well, that concludes this week of plant to-dos. It has been a crazy week and I do have another crazy week coming up, but at least I can sort of breathe a little bit better now that I'm not needing to film two things at once. This series is actually quite challenging to, to film because I have to time it with so many other things happening at the same time, but I really enjoy it and I really enjoy seeing everything come together. I like kind of being able to rewatch my week in a nutshell. So it is definitely worth it. But if you guys always sit through these marathons of just hour long, two hour long videos, thank you so much. I know it's not an easy task to be able to do it. And I know some people take a few days to do it. Yeah, hopefully it makes things easier for you to like, if you just want to throw it on while you're doing plant chores and stuff, um, that was sort of my, my goal when I, kind of went into doing this monthly thing. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun just kind of seeing what I did all week and hanging out with me and my friends. So if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up because it helps Pudge and I's visibility a lot on YouTube. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you to all of the old and the new subscribers. Thank you for all the love, all the sweet comments, and I will see you in the next one.